Hi, welcome to day 11 here at the Battle Conquer Muay Thai Training Camp in Pechaban. Today was just another day, it was a good day. They're all good days. Very grateful for every day that passes while here on this camp, on this journey. Um, quite a few, I don't know if they're breakthroughs, but just different layers of learnings and um, experiences that happened today, which uh, definitely want to document. I'm really excited to watch these videos in 50 years from now and look back because I'm already feeling like this trip is going to be one that sets the tone for a very long time in my life. So start of the day as per usual, I found my thing, man. I'm telling you, 6.20 a.m. alarm, up you get, out of the door 6.30, make a quick coffee, sit by the pool, soak it in before Muay Thai training. And I'm enjoying turning the lights on in the gym. I'm enjoying being the first one at the gym to turn the lights on. Uh, I don't know, there's something about it. Not that it's a competition, it's just, like when you're the one flicking the six lights on, it's just awesome. So uh, Muay Thai session was solid, hard as always. Uh, I'm hurt, I am injured, unfortunately. So my wrist, my right wrist, uh, I know exactly when I did it. I did it yesterday, to tell you the truth. So uh, when we were doing the pad work with the trainers, uh, I think the trainer thought that my hand wasn't rotated and he thought I wasn't hitting with my knuckle. And he was trying to tell me to make sure that like the point of impact is with the knuckle. And so like for a few punches, I kind of like rotated like that and then just jarred the wrist. So it's not too bad, um, but pretty much from when I threw the first punch today, once we had split up after the warm up, I knew straight away, like I'm not gonna be punching for a couple of days at least or however long it takes. So immediately, I wasn't really down and out about it. it immediately was like, all right, well, that just means I gotta get better on my left. I gotta get better with my kicks. I was really able to just like switch on straight away and figure out like, okay, this is what I've got to do. This is what I can do. And this is what is remaining as opposed to focusing too much on what I can't do. So that was that, it was a good session indeed. Uh, found my way back to camp one for breakfast as per usual. Um, and then I found myself at the gentle yoga session uh, at 10.30 a.m. So. Think about the, the, the structure of 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. training. 9 a.m., you gotta to get to the, the front of camp two because there's a car that takes you to camp one. If you miss it, you gotta walk. So you're taking the camp one, breakfast, I'm eating in about half an hour, whatever the, the case may be. Back to camp two to have a shower. Um, the restorative yoga is at 10.30, so you gotta get back to camp one. Got there in time, not a problem. Uh, this session was uh, a little different to the previous restorative one that I had done. A lot of it was basically uh, against the wall. So think of the, you know, you're facing the wall and the bottom of your bum is like right up against the wall and your legs are up. And <laughs> I don't remember, I don't know if I've ever had my legs up on a wall for that long. Um, our teacher, Giselle, tells us that it's good for your digestion. It's a good way to stretch. Uh, again, I've been talking a lot about my hips and how how sore they are. So um, what I've found is with, uh, with my hips, there's a lot of tension in there. I've spoke about this in a, a few days ago, I think it was. And I found, you know, with your breath, your breath actually allows you to go deeper into the stretch more than what you can, what you think you can. So I've been finding that the teachers are saying like, if there are any emotions that come up that they're natural. And I had never really broken through like that. Today was different. My hips, I mean, I was sitting on the wall what seemed to be like seven minutes. My hips like kept spreading. And so like, you know, my, uh, my, my groin is kind of separating and I felt this like pain going up my back or this, this feeling up my spine. And it was kind of like a release from my hips. And then I started feeling these, these emotions uh, from things that had happened in my life in the past, which had just come to mind, which I hadn't really thought of in a while. So that was interesting. I, I felt like it was a bit of a, a breakthrough. Um, got through the session. It's painful. The, the yoga and the stretching is painful. I'm not there. I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it mostly afterwards and I'm feeling the benefits afterwards. But during it, it's kind of like a an intense workout because it's like you're putting yourself through the pain of the stretch. So that was that, 
had a fresh coconut afterwards just to settle down uh, and then pretty much came back here, sat outside for a bit. I uh, spoke to uh, a good friend of the channel, Dioni, who gave me some recommendations for where to stay in Bangkok. So I'm going to be uh, leaving here on the 9th of February. So I'll need a night on the 9th of February at a hotel and the 10th. And I wanted to stay with a nice roof. There's heaps of rooftop bars in Bangkok. And I want to go take myself out to a nice dinner and sort of chill out and, and have an experience on a rooftop, just overlooking the world. And I did this when I was in Dubai last year, just before I left. I want to do it again while I'm here and just really prepare for coming home. So got that booked. I'm pretty excited. Uh, thank you, Dioni, if you're watching this. I really appreciate that. You, you really did help. Uh, I've been thinking about where to stay in Bangkok for a couple of days now. I just don't know. I'm, you know, I don't know Thailand very well. I haven't been here in 10, 12 years. So uh, I booked that. Then I went and did the Abitat class and did the warm up for the Muay Thai session. I knew that I wasn't going to be doing the Muay Thai class just because of the hand and like when you show up for the second session of Muay Thai in the day, it, it's painful. So um, did the warm up, got that in. So that's about an hour's worth of workout. Then I got in the ice bath finally and it just made me realize and reminded me again, like I need to be doing more ice baths throughout the week and add that as part of my recovery. What that means is I need to be organized and just go to the lady across the road right there, order 10 bags of ice. She will order it in the morning. It comes in the afternoon. You have your ice bath after you train and it's done. Cause I tell you now, I got out of the ice bath. I got back in, I got out and then instantly all pain gone. Uh, the, the tender feeling in my lower back, gone. You know, I've still got a little bit in my wrist. That, that probably will take a few days to heal, but just felt the effects of the ice bath straight away. And with the type of training I'm doing here, it just, just makes sense. Um, it's a new feature of the camp here, so it hasn't got a process per se. Like, it, they don't just provide you the ice every day. You've got to order it and you've got to organize it. And, you know, it can be a little bit confusing. So anyway, long story short, the lesson was get your ass organized and just organize your ice in the morning and then it comes in the afternoon and you're done. So that was that. Uh, then had dinner and then something really cool and magical had happened after dinner. I was sitting there um, with uh, a guy who's leaving tomorrow who I've met. He's such, such a nice guy. He's got such a good presence about him and he's just one of many people here who I've met who you just, you ask them what they do and everyone's doing something so different and I said this in a video throughout the week that like, I feel like I'm amongst people who I resonate with a lot more. A lot of people here who have taken life by the balls. You know, they've quit that job that they've been wanting to quit for a while or they've taken that time off or they've booked that trip that they've been wanting to book for a while but their friends wouldn't organize it with them so they've just come and traveled solo and they've taken that leap of faith. And, uh, I, I have discovered three or four people today alone who do certain jobs that I did not even know existed. Uh, and so that's cool. And it kind of brought me to talking about what I do and, you know, my story, you know, being a full-time lawyer, you know, going through the journey of leaving the profession full-time, starting the podcast, and then now this YouTube channel and talking about this sports team, which I love. And those of you who are subscribed to the channel, I know you love the club as well, but you know, when you're in this environment and you're meeting people from around the world, they look at you like, oh, is that rugby? Like, it's, it's amazing that what's been built here for a, a sports team that we talk about that no one in the world actually knows about. Um, but we've been, you know, been able to create a life doing it and, and move into this space as a career. So, you know, it's, it's a tough conversation. It's, it's a harder conversation to have, I find, in Australia, in Melbourne, because you have that initial tall poppy syndrome and people don't like talking themselves up because you get the backlash and I don't like to talk about what I do and talk about myself with pride to other people. I talk to myself with pride at times, um, but to be in an environment where everyone's inquisitive about what you're doing and then they, they figure out what you do and there's like, Yo, that's, really, that's really fascinating what you do. Um, kind of reassures me as well as to, you know, I, th I think this is one of the first times I've been in an environment where I've not been afraid. I don't know if afraid is the right word, but I haven't been hesitant when someone's asking like, what do you do? It's like, oh, this is what I do, I do YouTube and you know, um, you know, I still have my practicing license and, you know, write wills for people and, and things like that. So it's, 
I don't know, it gave me a, a, a re refined sense of self as to who I am, what I do. It was almost like a, a check-in with, what do you do with yourself? Like, you know, what do you actually do? Not that it matters what someone does, uh, but I think for me on my journey, and I think it's, it's part of the transition of, you know, taking this really seriously and, and doing this for, for a living now. So that was a really cool conversation that I had. Um, I spoke to a girl who's about to start practicing law. Uh, we had a really nice interaction and you know, told her a little bit about what I do and it, it seemed to spark something within her which she was grateful for and I was grateful for that conversation and that exchange. And I just came away from the discussions feeling good. Um, I also feel good because I've had an ice bath and I feel recovered, I feel fresh. Um, but it was also a reminder, you know, because I looked around today and 90% of the people who I looked at today were not here on my first day. You know, a lot of people are only here generally for five days or a week. Um, so I've now started to crack the code of people who have been here a little longer because I guess I'm maybe a little bit more familiar. I haven't just left. Um, so that was cool. And I think through the conversations I had today with and, and throughout the last you know, 11 days, people who have taken the leap and done something like this, I, I don't know who's watching this. Like I'm filming this for me. I'm filming this for me to watch many, many, many years from now. Um, but if you are in a point where you've thought about doing something like this and just getting away from your environment, even just for a couple of weeks, disconnecting from your environment to recharge the batteries, if you are watching this video and that is you, send me a message. Find me on Instagram or Facebook, LinkedIn, or just put a comment here. Just send me a message. Like If it's been in the back of your mind, like don't think twice about it. Do it. Like I've got 10 more days here and it's not magically awesome every day. Like it's challenging. You know, the emotions I felt today during that yoga session were tough. The stretching is tough. The Muay Thai is tough. I'm getting the shit kicked out of me. But through that process, you're building resilience and you're building yourself a mental edge. So I just can't speak in a more gratuitous tone than what I am right now. So uh, that was today. It was a bit of a long video. I went a little deep with it. Um, that was day 11. Got 10 more to go. Uh, big finish incoming. Uh, it's more about ticking the boxes now, getting the recovery right now. It's just making sure that you tick off at least one session a day and, uh, and kind of go from there. So that's today. See you tomorrow.